The Hillsdale Adoption Scam, a 2023 lifetime true story movie that I think is possibly inspired by Shalicia and Eric Milligan, and it could include the story of Gabby Watson, a well-known adoption scammer. The plot for Lifetime's The Hillsdale Adoption Scam is about a married couple who struggles to have their own children. When a pregnant stranger appears on their doorstep, the couple jumps at the chance to adopt her baby, but secrets are later revealed. The Hillsdale Adoption Scam's cast, according to the Internet Movie Database, stars Danica Frederick as Georgia and Keisha Knight Pulliam as Bethany. This lifetime mystery thriller is directed by Asia Youngman and written by Justin D. James. Now, the synopsis for the Hillsdale adoption scam, uh, let's look at that. It's inspired by true events and part of Lifetime TV's six original films that are ripped from the headlines. The Hillsdale adoption scam introduces us to a lovely um, interracial couple and business partners, Bethany and Terrence. They have a booming business. They live in a gorgeous home. They have a wonderful relationship and their lives are happy. But Bethany and Terrence want more children, and they are unable to make that happen. Now, that all changes when they meet a pregnant stranger named Georgia, who randomly shows up on their porch asking for help. And they later find out she is looking for suitable parents for her baby. Now, Bethany believes this is heaven sent. A pregnant woman showing up suddenly in their lives, that has to mean that this is a good sign. Her husband, Terrence, though, is not so sure. But Bethany just might have the chance to adopt this baby. Now, Bethany and George forge a friendship and a bond. But over the next few months, as the pregnancy progresses, Bethany and Terrence grow suspicious that something is just not right with this young lady. They are right. Georgia has deep secrets and shady motives. In the end, they find out this so-called surrogate mom was looking for a desperate couple she could con out of their bucks. Now, I told you that I believe that this case or this story is loosely based on Shalicia and Eric Milligan. That's in my opinion. It doesn't have to be, but I think that it might be inspired by their story. Now, the Milligans, um, there are Christian interracial couple from Madison, Alabama. Shalicia said that her nightmare started in 2019. She was having problems with fertility. Um, her husband, Eric, already had children of his own, but Shalicia wanted a child with him. So they decided to adopt. That was their best option. They posited themselves to be suitable parents. You know, they made sure they could pass all of the checks. They were financially stable. They had a suitable home. Um, they had a great background. Um, so they were sure that they would, you know, be positioning themselves to be good parents for a child. Shalicia took to Facebook groups. You know, that's what many of the parents are doing now. You know, they're looking for babies on social media instead of using traditional agencies. Social media would cut out the middleman. It would put them in direct contact with pregnant mothers or surrogates who were looking to put their babies up for adoption. Unfortunately, it also means that it makes them easy prey for scammers and con artists. So Shalicia tells her story. She posts her story on social media, how they're looking for a baby. They wait patiently until they are contacted by a young mom, 16, who reaches out saying that she's looking for parents for her child. Now, according to this young lady, she was living under unfortunate circumstances. She had been violated. She'd become pregnant and was now looking for good parents for the newborn baby because she didn't want the baby. The Milligans learned the girl's mother wasn't alive, that the brother was locked up, and so she was left really without any support. So they wanted to support her. But from there, the story became even more bizarre by 2020. It turned out the young lady was not pregnant at all. Instead of 16, it was more like 19. In fact, her whole identity was a lie. Investigators said she had done this to other families. Now, despite that letdown, you know, and even though the Milligans were disappointed, 
they continued to try to find a baby. Uh, they reached out to the agency Pear Tree, who told them that they would match them to a girl who was due soon. They connected with her by video and stayed in contact for several weeks. And according to People Magazine, the Milligans paid her rent, bought clothes for her, and uh, they did all of that up until the birth of the baby. However, that was another disappointment because social services had to get involved once the baby was born with substances in its system. So um, the Milligans lost out on that opportunity for a new baby again. Uh, the baby was placed with a minister that the birth mother knew. So in 2022, Shalicia and Eric Milligan told their story on the Tamron Hall Show in an episode titled Swindles and Scams. And it looks like today the couple is still engaged in their Christian ministry work and they're looking still to adopt a baby. Now, I think that was the main story that inspired the movie. Let me tell you about a couple that I think also could have played a part in the making of this movie. Case number two, Michigan. Samantha Stewart couldn't have children. A hysterectomy and problems stemming from endometriosis had taken that dream away. She really wanted a family with her husband, Dave, and adoption seemed like it was the answer for this couple. Like the Milligans, Samantha and Dave Stewart went to social media. On their Instagram page, they described themselves and told their story. A few months later, a Georgia woman named Ashley contacted them. Now, Ashley claimed, uh, stated that she was 16. They were hopeful that a new baby was coming into their lives. Communication uh, between them continued. The pregnant mother shared photos of her growing belly on social media, and the stewards were happy and expectant. Are you guys talking to any other adopted families? Sam asked Ashley. I'm just scared of being hurt. I, I want to be a mom so badly, is what she told them. Samantha even began talking to Ashley on the phone. Her husband, Dave, started noticing some strange things about Ashley. Samantha also noticed a change in her demeanor and her tone. She had been very nice at first, but now she was downright rude and abrupt. They tried to understand that Ashley had had a difficult past. She told them that her mother had ended her own life and that her brother had mistreated and violated her. Ashley's messages, though, became so depressing, it was too much for Samantha. They started to take a toll on her, and soon Samantha couldn't take it anymore. She stopped communicating with her altogether. Communication resumed briefly when Ashley suddenly sent Samantha a message telling her the baby had been born, and she put the caption, she's yours. Now, when she put she's yours and Samantha saw pictures of this baby, she falls in love all over again and wants this baby. She's ready to be a mom to this sweet little baby girl. Uh, but then she's locked out. Ashley blocked her on social media, wouldn't answer the phone, just completely disappeared. These scams, you know, they not only waste couples money, but they waste their time, their emotional energy, and Samantha was just drained. She posted her frustrations on social media and received a ton of support from other women who had been scammed by Ashley, this woman named Ashley. Turns out the photos were all fake. Ashley stole them from the real mother-to-be, a woman named Ashley Kane. Now, it appears in this case, there was no money exchange, so the police didn't investigate this one. But according to one article, one journalist believed that the person posing as Ashley was really a woman named Gabby, Gabby Watson. In the end, the Stewarts found their bouncing miracle baby, a baby boy named Parker. That's what they told the Daily Mail. Let's talk briefly about Gabby Watson. Now, Gabby Watson was a 20-something woman from Georgia. Now, in the movie, the adoption scammer's name is Georgia. And the first couple that I told you about, the Milligans, were from the South as well, Alabama. 
Now, Gabby Watson, they say, was emotionally disturbed and had severe mental health issues. She scammed thousands of couples online as she pretended to be pregnant. Her motive, though, wasn't money. Detectives believe she got a kick out of playing with the emotions of vulnerable women who she knew wanted babies. This case made national headlines in 2019. Detectives say Gabby was an adoption catfisher and schemer who would find these vulnerable couples who she thought were gullible online, ask them if they were looking to adopt, and then she would tell them that she was pregnant. Afterwards, the couple would pay. Then her personality would change. She was nice in the beginning, but then became belligerent and angry and verbally abusive to her clients. She even taunted some of them. When it was time to deliver the baby, there was no baby. Turns out she stole this other woman's photos online, as I told you before. Now, this case appeared on the Dr. Phil show. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I was pretending to be pregnant and I was telling adoption parents that I had a baby. She sent me a video of babies moving in her stomach. Gabby appeared on the Dr. Phil show and so did her father. Now her father said that she had severe depression, psychosis, that she heard voices, was bipolar, and she was also expecting to die soon. So she had a lot of worries in her life and they believe she acted out of anger. I'm done. But mostly the police believe that it gave her a sense of power and the attention she wanted. So her behavior was very erratic. She had several emotions that she showed the audience from anger to sadness. She began having these mental health issues and behavioral issues after her mother passed away when she was a little girl. For Gabby, it was all a game. She enjoyed sending these couples down an emotional roller coaster. Now, Gabby is the most infamous adoption scammer, but there are others. Elle Magazine, when I was doing my research, Elle Magazine mentioned two more. Ingrid Hernandez, uh, she was a woman who swindled a mother who was looking to privately adopt on TikTok. Tara Lee of New Haven tricked over 150 couples in the U.S. and swiped more than $2 million from these people who wanted to adopt children. She would say that she was matching them with birth mothers who didn't even exist. And they weren't even pregnant. Many of them were not even pregnant. Now, money was her motive. She used this money for lavish trips, expensive jewelry, and other luxury items. For her crimes, she was given 10 years in the federal pen and was ordered to pay back a million dollars in restitution. So the question is, how do you protect yourself? If you're a person looking to adopt, you have to do your due diligence. You have to do your research. And many of these people have been scammed even by agencies. We've heard of stories like that. Now, if you're using an agency, of course, we would say do your research on the agency. Make sure that real people have dealt with this agency and that this agency has an impeccable reputation. But remember, in this movie and these cases that I've told you about, these people were using social media to find their babies. Now, how do you protect yourself from that, really? And if you're using social media, that really ups your chances for being swindled. Social media is really sort of a dangerous place, in my opinion, to find a birth mother. First of all, you don't even know who these people are. Even if you find out their real names, and even if you're using their real names, there is another problem. You do not know their background. You do not know their genetic makeup. Let's come back to that. A couple of facts. Surrogacy can range from $80,000 to $120,000. Adoptions can range from $8,000 to $15,000, all the way up to $20,000 to $50,000. When these couples are swindled out of their money, it is psychologically traumatizing for them. 
it inflicts all sorts of psychological anguish. And many times it just ends in heartbreak. These women want a miracle baby. They want an angel baby they can shower with love and care. For some women, becoming a mother is their biggest dream. Now back to those dangers, just want to mention briefly, you know, even after you have taken all of those precautions, so you've done your due diligence, you've done your research, you think you've met someone online and you think you know her story and you've made the identification of who this person is and everything seems legitimate and you adopt the baby. Well, there's one more possible problem. You do not know the genetic makeup of this baby. A lot of times that is shrouded in mystery even with people we know in person. What does that mean? That means that even though some of these couples have successfully adopted and giving loving care and nurturing to that child, depending on what they have inherited from their birth parents, that child's genetic and behavioral makeup could still come back to haunt them later. We have all heard those stories of people who have adopted and when that child grows up, it's like they don't even know the child. The child turned out to be very dangerous or to have severe mental issues because they really didn't know what illnesses, mental illnesses ran in the family or what genetic, other genetic issues could have run in the family. I have been studying a lot about generational pathologies and how those pathologies are passed down to children generation after generation after generation. And really, let me get, let me not say that. Okay. The Hillsdale Adoption Scam Lifetime Movie. Those are my thoughts on the true story events that I think could have inspired this movie. And, uh, you tell me what you think. Maybe you have some other ideas. Now, this movie airs March 18th at 8, 7 central on the Lifetime channel.